Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We're excited to have our next guest here joining us once again, Dr. Ann Creekmore, joining us live from Richmond, Virginia, to talk more about what she does. Uh, also as an author, <laughs> and she's here helping so many people. We're excited to get through a lot. So it's psychologistinvirginia.com. Is that correct? Correct. All spelled out. Perfect. Mm-hmm. We can find her there. And also tell us any other form of contact before we start. Well, I think that's the main one. It's fine. Good. You be able to get me, you know, all my email and phone, everything right on there. All right. So practice. Mm -hmm. perfect. Well, we need an overview about what you do because there's a lot. You're helping people with uh, relationships. Uh, There's all different types of workshops. We're helping to build self-esteem, get over anxiety, even chronic illness. And then you also have, um, well, you're an author. We've talked about your, tell us the name of the book. It's love yourself, love your life. And it's in my maiden name, actually, Filosa. So, um, but um, it's it's spelled F. I L O S A. Perfect. And several other books and C- some CD MP3s as well, hypnosis ones. So, but that's the main one and uh, that we've been talking about. So, what inspired you to write this book? And just to give a little overview about what it entails for new timers here today saying, mm, I want to check this out. Yes. Well, I don't know. I started thinking about, you know, being a working mom and, and things that would help. Um, but then I realized it really applied to anybody who's, you know, depressed or anxious or struggling with problems and living. So it's really a- applicable for anyone. Um, it's actually a, a summary of the main types of therapy available. Um, like the first chapter is about cognitive behavioral therapy, the most effective form of therapy per the research where you change your thoughts to be able to change your feelings and then that changes your behaviors and the outcomes in your life situations. Um, so each chapter is a different type of therapy on change and how to make yourself happy in all these different areas and how to be happy and healthy, like in changing your thoughts or how the second chapter on um you know, how do you take a negative emotion and you know, turn it into a positive, constructive life solution that you feel relaxed about, you know, kind of client centered type of therapy and so on. You know, this chapters on speaking your truth, assertiveness and uh, creating healthy relationships and so on. So on the main schools of thought in psychology. Oh, that's a good topic. And it's one that I'm sure you deal with a lot. It's relationships. Ah! Yeah. Um, you know, how do you make them last? You know, you you love someone, you fall in love with them, and things are always good in the beginning. Things change a little, and then you gotta grow together or you grow apart. And a lot of people grow apart. That's why they come to people like you. Could you share? And maybe you can give us some inside tips to um maybe things we should and shouldn't be doing when it comes to relationships. Sure. Well, I, I say the first thing, if you're talking about like romantic relationships, would be to try to find someone that, that you could have a long lasting satisfaction with. And usually there's like three dimensions to evaluate for that. One is, of course, romantic chemistry. You want to have that chemistry. You want to like the way he kisses or whatever, or she kisses. Um, then the second one is the kind of um, the co-parenting one, kind of a devotion as if you feel towards that person like you would towards your child, like you really mm-hmm. are interested in their well-being. They're kind of like your best friend. Got it. And that's probably the most important one, really, you know, and should go both ways. And then the third one is your kind of your life philosophy connection. Like it's usually like maybe your religion or your spirituality or your life philosophy. So basically you can kind of grow emotionally, you know, spiritually because you share a similar philosophy. You can talk the same language and go a little deeper and really communicate on a deep level and help each other kind of grow. And so if all three of those are there, it's kind of like the love of life, you know, the Mm -hmm. uh, soul connection, if you will, you know, you hear about, and that can make for a good long lasting relationship. Sometimes people get, you know, originally it's the romantic connection, but what happens if really that's all you've really got, like after about a year or so, 
you know, the oxytocin goes down, the limerence yeah. or what they call it. And so you really don't have a basis for a relationship. And um, and that's going to last, long lasting. So that's, that, that's something just to kind of start with is to think like, well, do I have these connections with this person? And then there are things you can also look at, like, you know, um, are there red flags in the relationship? Not yes. that the person that's going to be your love of life is how many of them really come around, you know, I mean, it's not constantly that that would be, you know, happening. So sometimes people have problems, right? Yeah. They may have, you know, they may have um, disorders, they could have a bipolar disorder or dissociative type of thing or um, substance abuse or whatever, you know, what happens. I think an important quality in another person is to look for someone who's willing to at least work on themselves, you know, take ownership for their mm -hmm. problems and be willing to go get therapy or join that correct support group or, you know, or AA or, you know, do things that are making them a better person. Because even if you have all these connections, whatever problems they have or baggage that they bring in, you're going to be affected by that. And if they're willing to look at themselves and say, yeah, I'm going to work on myself and self-discover and be the best I can be, that's somebody that you'd really want to be with because nobody's perfect. You know, they're gonna, people are going to have stuff. So at least if they're willing to look at it and then maybe get the right help would be another factor to look at when you want to be involved with someone. And how do you work with them and to give them help? You're working with them together like this virtually? Do you do one-on-one -on -one sessions? What type of commitment is it to want to work with, you know, someone like yourself to help a relationship grow and blossom again? Yes. Um, well, I, I do a lot of couples therapy um, and sometimes people have, you know, issues too, like you brought up about the individual as well. You can, you know, combination sometimes is good because certain things, baggage they brought in from another relationship or from their family of origin, something with their parents, triggers or traumas, that really can impact on yeah. a couple's relationship. And, and then you might want to veer off and do a bit of some individual to help them work through that issue that keeps getting in the way of their communication. The person's becoming so triggered or something. Writing some of this down. <laughs> oh, good. Take your time. <laughs> That's always a good thing to do. <laughs> yeah. And go, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead what you're well, you know, you love obviously what you do and you help so many people. Is relationships one of the things you, you help people with most or, you know, and what are the areas did you want to kind of focus on? Because I know this is your show and you've had quite a few and I know you've been with Steve. So I just want to make sure we're not covering the same stuff that you, you, you talked about already. <laughs> Oh, Jill, I'm fine. I'm so glad to see you, you know, a uh, long time Thank to you. see. And um, I really enjoyed the time we had. And so anything that you're interested in talking about is fine. We kind of went through most of the chapters in the book and just kind of touched on different, you know, each chapter a week or something. So I've done that. And whatever you find uh, that you would think would be helpful to people and you to yourself, as well, of course, it, you know, feel free to ask or bring up. Perfect. I do pretty much do all types of therapy. You know, I do individual. And you do hypnosis. Do you do hypnosis as well? Correct. Yes, I do. I do hypnosis. Um, I have actually a couple of uh, CD MP3s that are available. Um, that uh, that you know, I do it you know, with my clients, but then sometimes maybe they can't get in one week. So I, I made these so they could have it in between because generally they, you know, hypnosis, you, you ought to do uh, the, they said recommend doing like four to six sessions of it weekly or something to make sure all the different parts click in and, uh, or if they, they're, you know, boosted, like say you're doing it for helping someone stop smoking, maybe yeah. for four days they're not craving, but then it goes back in some. So then you come in for your weekly, you know, booster and, and then eventually, you know, get solid on it by the fourth session or something like that can happen. So, but I have a couple of them. Um, one is for anxiety, depression, addiction, and sleep. Ooh. Yeah. And, um, and then the other one is for uh, disruptive imbalances in um, dissociative identity disorders spectrum, which is really kind of complex PTSD, like early oh. trauma. Uh, and that 
you know, is a really helpful one to help people kind of stay stable. And is and um, so I, I offer those, and, and of course I do them as well in the office, but they're available as well. Well, let me ask about hypnosis, because that's something that could be beneficial in so many different aspects. And I've heard the basics about the weight loss and the, um, uh, you know, uh, losing weight and uh, addictions like stopping smoking. But to me, what I think is important is I know of someone who did hypnosis for um, fibromyalgia. My sister's friend had severe Mm -hmm. pain. That's something that, you know, it's can you share how that works for chronic pain and you can help manage, I mean, from headaches to you can you elaborate on what it can help with? Yes. Um, well, there are two types of hypnosis. First of all, and one of them is the suggestions type, and that is, um, you know, for anything. It can be for pain, for quitting smoking, for procrastination, mm-hmm. for anxiety, depression, and so on. Um, and the other one is kind of regression, where if say you want to go back to a certain time or trauma and do some healing work on that or remember something and then bring it up for healing, where you speak during it, but in the uh, or respond, you know, and uh, during the hypnosis session. But the hypnosis in general is, you know, basically you're going to a a uh, to a relaxed a mm-hmm. bodily, but also uh, in m- mentally, you're not at at beta where you're you know go go go. You're going down to alpha where you can re- and maybe even theta lower. I guess it, it depends on the person. Eventually, you know, and how many times they do it, they get more and mm-hmm. more relaxed. But you're kind of getting into this nice relaxed state where when you're when a person gives you these positive suggestions when i would give these suggestions as a therapist that we've got a little cheat sheet for things you want like four things maybe the most or so you know like you want to sleep better you don't want to feel anxious you don't want to feel depressed that kind of thing Uh, and say you want to lose weight you know or you want to get exercise then um when you're in that relaxed state you know following your breath and um, I encourage you to follow your breath and then just go to happy water, calm scene in your mind when you're all relaxed and these suggestions are given to you, then your mind is not going to argue with them. All that negative thinking that gets in the way uh, isn't going to sabotage you absorbing that and those positive thoughts. Your mind is getting renewed and you just can do it then because you haven't argued yourself out of it. Like, oh no, I don't think that can happen or whatever. You're, uh, then you're able to just do it. If it fits with your value system, mm-hmm. you'll be able to do it. Well, Much- it, and does it, does it help the pain temporarily or does it, is it long lasting? Do you need more than one session to keep the, you know, to, to keep the pain down? Or do you learn a certain technique after you become hypnotized there, your pain will ease out a little. Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Kind of die down. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Yeah. I mean, like with um, most things that are kind of more at the physical level to some degree, you know, the pain then, um, or, you know, uh, uh, rather than just a thought process, like maybe just negative thoughts that may take four sessions or so before, you know, it's really clicking in. But by the sixth session, you should really be feeling better. And it can be combined with things like energy work, like Reiki, Mm -hmm. you know, and and so on. But pain is basically part uh, is a way of your, um, you know, get your mind getting the message that there's a problem to be taken care of. And uh, and so. You know, in a sense, it kind of you kind of maybe know that, and you don't need to have chronic pain explaining that maybe this side of your body can use some loving care. Extra TLC, we call it. Right, right. And so it, you know, that can be stopped. That where you can say, well, you know, gone. I don't need to have that message sent um, uh, by the, you know, by the suggestion that you can kind of see it or you can see it healed. Um, and, and then kind of stop that kind of message from constantly being transmuted, committed rather <laughs> to your brain, to your awareness. Um, so, I mean, it can, so, and then also if I were to work with someone with pain, I would do the hypnosis. Um, I would suggest maybe some energy kind of work type of things as well, really. And, um, then 
do things like in life, you know, the yep. problems of living, how, what, what could be contributing to it? You know, what are good medications that maybe could be, you know, talked about with your doctor that would be healing for it or supplements? Um, what, what kind of motions or things are you doing? You know, I mean, I have someone in who just was having problems with her feet and she went to her doctor and he prescribed a certain shoe uh, boot, which is she, as long as she stuck them right underneath her bed in the morning and put her feet right in them, she was falling behind through the day. So, you know, there's a lot to it. You know what I'm saying? As far as mm -hmm. you, you're trying to get a real healing, um, and there are certain things that uh, I had a, I, I will recommend things that I've worked with a lot of integrative physicians and psychiatrists, and they, you know, also uh, advise the, um, the supplements and things like that. Yeah. I mean, there's a really good product called Arnicare that um, is, is available through Amazon. It's kind of a homeopathic cream, but it's just amazing about how, you know, it reduces any kind of inflammation or bruise or feeling of injury if you use it, you know, slather it on and use it several times a day when you're having the problem. So, I mean, I, I would work like with the whole person, you know, mind, body, spirit type of thing to, to work on, the, on a pain problem. Um, but the hypnosis definitely is, is effective yep. as part of that process. And now let me remind everyone, Dr. Ann Creek Moore, how we can reach out to you. We still have seven minutes on the show, but just want to make sure we can remind everyone how can we find you and also purchase your book and work with you. And you're in what state? You're in Virginia, right? Correct. Yes. But the work you do uh, for hypnosis uh, and you can work out of state, correct? And some is even covered by insurance, right? In your state? Oh, yes. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist in mm -hmm. Virginia. And so that's so, where I provide services that are mm -hmm. reimbursable by insurance. Um, but of course, I, I can do things with uh, uh, like hypnosis out, you know, or coaching or kinds of things like that beyond Virginia. But actual um, psychologist uh, sessions are in Virginia. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I and mm -hmm. And the website again? It's Psychologist in Virginia, uh, spelled out psychologist in plural S in Virginia, spelled out, dot right. com. Mm -hmm. Well, do you have any recent uh, good client stories that are heartfelt and warming? That have you helped someone recently that maybe you want to, to share about the type of work that you're doing that could kind of relate to someone who is uh, with us today? Wow. Um, I probably have so many. I, I could, <laughs> can't really think about it. Um, so do you, uh, have that, any suggestion of some area that you'd like me to talk yeah. about? Well, what about, uh, though, I think a lot of us struggle with mental health, depression, anxiety. Um, and you know, since the pandemic, I know we spoke about uh, how an increase in uptick and all of that, but your work, um, obviously you're helping people going through these types of situation. And I noticed mental health is just, in the news all the time and there's people suffering and could you share your thoughts on mental health and maybe talk about some of the key aspects of helping someone get through this or any advice to our listeners at home who's suffering with depression or anxiety? Yes. Um, well, one of the things I think people don't need is to, you know, not be diagnosed correctly. And I think that's really important at the beginning. I know that it sounds a little clinical to do a quote intake when a person first comes in for their counseling and they kind of want to talk about all their problems in living, mm -hmm. but it's important to do an assessment uh, to find out, well, what are the underlying or root functioning uh problems that are occurring that they need help with as well as you know just what the stressor is that brings them in at the moment and and sometimes things really get um you know missed or uh or or seen you know is not really seen as for what's going on like a lot of people may come in with depression and anxiety as uh, like being treated for depression and anxiety, but actually it's the moody depression or bipolar depression. Mm -hmm. And if you diagnose that properly, then it's a different type of medication, mood stabilizer, atypical antidepressant types of medications versus if you just have a regular flat unipolar depression that you go to the PC, that the PCP can prescribe and 
does the regular yep. Lexapro, Prozac, all those. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which, you know, and sometimes those really don't work as well for the moody depression, for the bipolar depression. Um, in fact, can be, make it worse. So for me, part of it is when someone comes in that, you know, they have to put up with my fun paperwork where they, you know, fill out these different questionnaires that really help and, you know, get ask questions from the diagnostic and statistical manual mental disorders to really get a handle on what is going on with them. Why, you know, what, what their actual mental conditions are, because once you figure that out, then, I mean, the treatments just follow, you know, there, you know, certain protocols for different things. Um, some people may be seen as a, having a bipolar disorder when they really have a dissociative identity disorder spectrum, a complex PTSD, and they're kind of switching to different modes in their brain, which is more of an emotional trauma-based thing, but then they're seen as just mood swings and it's not that. So I guess to me, the first step is always to really just figure out what's going on, go deep, and they can tell you everything's going on and they're the ones filling out the yeah. question the information and then you move on to what will help them. Well, also, uh, Dr. Ann Creekmore, in your line of work, and how many years have you uh, been in practice for? Oh, do I have to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a good I, thing. You have this experience. Like many, 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 many years. How's that? Does that good. help? <laughs> yes. Do you have a favorite area of expertise that you like diving into? I mean, clearly you're passionate about the work you do. You wrote a book, uh, you know, to help yeah. people. And mm -hmm. here you are still in practice in Virginia. What would you say, um, you know, really moves you most? Well, I mean, I just like being there and helping people. You know, people sometimes say that, well, doesn't it bother you to have somebody come, people come in and they're telling you these problems and, you know, kind of feel depressed about that. But just the fact that they come and usually they feel lighter and brighter. And, and you know, just that's what gives me the satisfaction to know that I can be there for, the, for this person and just help uplift them, that they're, they're feeling better from coming. So that's... I guess the bottom line for me. Beautiful. And if someone wants to reach out to you to work with you, uh, would you mind again sharing all forms of contact? And again, in the state of Virginia, just to confirm, you're able to yeah. do which work compared to the virtual work with someone here like myself in New York. Correct. Yes. Um, you can uh, you can go to also Psychology Today and look me up under Ann Creekmore. Um, a lot of people but also, um, you know, Psychologists in Virginia is my main clinical practice website. Because of the book, I'm also, I used to have a nonprofit, the uh, Love Your Life Healing Center. So uh, I've kind of reenacted it since the pandemic, kind of got things shut down somewhat for everybody. But um, you can start to go there as well. That's another website that I'll have. But everything should be on the Psychologists in Virginia, my phone number and email and everything. Perfect. Well, pleasure seeing you back here again. Thank you for joining us and always being here. Uh, and again, the book one more time, tell us how we could find it. Yeah. Love Yourself, Love Your Life by A.P. Filosa, F-I-L-O-S-A, um, licensed clinical psychologist, and uh, should be coming out of the revision one, should be coming out in a couple of weeks. So it's Great. available now, Audible, Kindle, the old version, but new ones even come and updated. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Ann Creekmore. We appreciate your time here and looking forward to the next time we connect, right? You never yes. know. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much, Jill, for everything. You have a fantastic day. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game-changer. This is where your life begins again. 
We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay. 